offshore paperwork. This is something that concerns some people. In fact, uh, we got a couple of comments here on YouTube from folks saying, I love the tax benefits of going offshore, but I can barely keep track of my taxes and my filings in my home country. Why do I want to add more complexity? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you my suggestions for reducing the complexity and making the offshore process easy. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. It is true that if you're going to go offshore, you need to be a bit more on your game. So many people I talk to in their home countries, they have their same accountant for many years. That accountant knows domestic stuff. But what they find when they go offshore is that accountant has no idea how international works. And so you're going to want to have a plan if you go overseas. In addition to that, uh, banks require paperwork. Company formations require paperwork. Uh, some jurisdictions, depending on where you incorporate your business offshore, uh, may want you to file certain audits or file tax returns every year. So how do you manage that? Well, here's the first question that I ask myself, okay? I ask myself, is there an ROI? Whether I'm hiring a web developer, whether I'm hiring an editor, whether I'm going offshore, am I going to make more money by doing this? And then am I going to make more money if I can simply outsource it, okay? My approach is, is from that of the, of the six or seven figure entrepreneur, okay? If you're making $50,000 a year, then you might have a different strategy. And, and quite frankly, maybe just taking advantage of personal tax exemptions may be better. But if you're in that six or seven figure camp, okay, the answer is there's likely going to be a very good ROI on you putting together the infrastructure to go offshore and have someone else handle the paperwork. There's a couple things that I've done uh, over the years. Number one, I keep a spreadsheet that lists all of my bank accounts, uh, all of my trading accounts, all of the real estate I own. And I actually figured out I can, I can very easily just take that and just add up my, my net worth. But I started it because as a former US citizen, I used to have to report all my bank accounts. And so I didn't want to forget any. As you know, I have a lot of bank accounts that I've tested over the years. Uh, and so I would just open a bank account and I would just put every account number on the spreadsheet. I would keep my balances, I would update it, and I would go through every month and just make sure everything was well kept. It's really important when you go offshore to keep better records. I know some people run their businesses, they're just kind of raiding the ATM, they're figuring it out all later, they're hoping they don't you know, get caught. You need to really get things dialed in. And I think a spreadsheet is uh, one thing that you can do to really get things dialed in. Keep all your bank accounts. I have a separate spreadsheet where I have kind of a business dashboard where I list all the companies that I have. If they have a tax ID, what's that? What's the registered address? Then I've got a separate tab that lists, you know, company bank accounts, merchant accounts, et cetera. So I have all the information at my fingertips because one thing we talk about when going offshore is you want multiple bank accounts. You want multiple options. You want redundancies. And so there's going to be a lot more to keep track of. Set up a spreadsheet and just get it organized from day one. The next thing I want you to consider is what is the end result that you'd like to accomplish? And to do that, you're going to need to banish your preconceptions. It's always interesting for me to go out and, and look around the internet and see everyone, all the fanboys for Estonia or all the fanboys for, for this or that different solution. Okay. Estonia is not a bad solution in and of itself, but I think a lot of people go into it not expecting to have certain tax obligations, to have filing obligations. Now, Estonia is great because there, have, there has been kind of this whole ecosystem built around it where people just handle everything for you. In my experience, it's a bit better for folks who are um, just starting out, people who have smaller businesses rather than, than larger you know, six and seven figure businesses. That's my personal opinion. But if you have that smaller business, then Estonia has a de decent ecosystem. You may have some tax obligations there. If not now, then eventually. And so you have to consider, you know, where do I want to be long term? Okay. So what does that mean? It means considering what are the annual filing deadlines? What do I need to file? Who's going to file it for me? How do I get that done? And so this is the seven ha habits of highly effective people. Start with the end in mind. So many folks are chasing that shiny object where it's the Panama company or the Malta company, and they have the shiny object, and they just start with the shiny object, move forward, find a problem, be frustrated, move forward, find a problem, be frustrated, move forward. 
have had so many people come to me who have companies that are fully operational, but a year later they can't use them because they got stuck in one of those steps figuring things out, let alone got to the point where they had the maintenance requirement, okay, where they had to file the, the annual report. So understand what's involved going in. This is why I don't cheap out. Because when you go to these places where they start your company for $3, you have a lot of hidden fees. They often kind of nickel and dime you, you know, there's this, then there's this. Oh, but you got to file this. Oh, but this. I just want somebody to give it to me all at once. In fact, one thing I tell my entire team to do, whether it's my strategy department, whether it's my R&D department, when you have a new opportunity for us to present, I want every single price, okay? If it's a company, everything that's involved to make that company, company function. Because so many providers out there, they say, oh, now your company's established. We forgot to tell you, yeah, you need, uh, you need one of these. That's an extra grand. Okay. And so you want to know what you're involved in going in. And that means what I actually have is I have a, a list of, of just a business dashboard of annual things to do. My one of I have an audit for one of my companies. I just I'm just going to do it in January. And I'm going to find a provider who's going to cooperate with just getting it done in January and moving at that pace. So I think that the real issue here is knowing what you're getting into. Don't, stip, don't just dip your toe in and then figure it out as you go along or you're going to have problems. Because what a lot of people don't realize is, whether it's the United States or many offshore jurisdictions, are not only increasing enforcement of the documents you need to provide, they're also stepping up penalties for not doing so, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. In some cases, it's even criminal. And so if you're not aware of that, you might miss something that's potentially an issue. But you know, the big thing that I, that I really, again, ask, because I, all, I know that we all want to save money, okay? Uh, and we've all been in that situation at some point in our lives where it's like, oh, why can't I hire the web developer for $20 an hour? Well, you realize the person for $20 an hour just can't get the job done. You're spending too much time managing them. Um, you know, they're just not that good. You need the guy for $50 an hour. The market speaks and tells you the $20 an hour people won't get the job done. So you got to go up to $50 or $100 an hour. And I think that people look at the offshore world as... Um, they just want that $20 an hour person. One of the things that I try and emphasize uh, in our business is not only starting with the end in mind, but just having like, here's, here's what it's gonna cost. But, but don't focus so much on the cost, focus on the ROI. If you have a business that makes half a million dollars in profit and you're paying $200,000 in tax uh, where you live right now, and you can get that to $10,000 in tax, I'm sure you can find an ecosystem of people to support you for a lot less than $190,000. The biggest piece for offshore paperwork is time is money, okay? So obviously if you have to spend your entire life you know, finding the right people, you're, uh, you're gonna waste a lot of time. So it's not just gonna be the money that's, the, you know, that's, that's in question, it's gonna be you're wasting a lot of time that, that you're gonna lose money running your business and, and therefore uh, you're not saving as much as you think. That's where I say just, you know, not find the most expensive person because I've had um, wealthy people who have gone to like the number one you know, Caribbean law firm where they wear those those white shoes, you know, polished shoes, and they charge a thousand dollars an hour, and and often those guys don't get the job done. Some of the big accounting firms, people have come and said they didn't get the job done for me. But I would focus not on the people who start up your company for nine dollars because their business is in nickeling and dining you with fees always having a new thing for you to do, it's often confusing. If you want to avoid the, the hassle of going offshore every year, you're going to want um, a good international bookkeeper. Okay, I have a great international bookkeeper. He understands many of the different jurisdictions that we deal in. He understands the U.S., where I'm from, uh, where we do some business. He understands other Western countries. He understands the offshore world. And so he can easily maneuver between filing paperwork for an offshore company, getting information to an accountant somewhere else, helping to file forms, and really being the, the quarterback for all of that. You're also going to want someone good in every one of your jurisdictions. For example, if you're, if you're incorporating in a place like Hong Kong, you're going to need to do an annual audit. What I found is you probably want to find someone who has international experience. That may not be a local person. Okay? A lot of people go to Hong Kong and they're upset by the local standard of service from the local Hong Kong Chinese. Nothing wrong with them, but, but the, it's, it's very much a, a, a mill where they're not there to necessarily answer your questions. You just send them the stuff and, and they get it done. They're very efficient at it. But, but a lot of people from, from the U.S. And, and other Western countries, they want to have more of a consultative relationship. So you might want to find someone who's from 
an environment that's closer to yours. Nothing wrong with Hong Kong at all. Nothing to love the Hong Kong people, but they may not be used to the same kind of a work culture that you're used to. So you're going to want to have someone in each country where you're doing business and, and really um, possibly even in the places where you bank in order to help you file any reports. Okay, so here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to do one of two things. Number one, throw your hands up in the air and say this can't be done and just keep paying hundreds of thousands and, and over the course of years, millions of dollars. What I also don't want you to do is go and incorporate in the Gambia because they promise you there's no work whatsoever because then you're going to spend your time uh, fighting to have any bank accept you or you know, you know, fighting perception, that kind of thing. I want you to, and everyone's plan is going to be different, obviously. No, no video is going to tell you what this plan is. But what I want you to do is figure out what's the happy medium, okay, where you can go and, and someone can teach you, okay, uh, how to start with the end in mind. You're going to know everything that you need to know going in. You're going to make your list of bank accounts, your list of companies. You're going to make your, your annual calendar with what needs to be done. You're going to be aware of which forms need to be filed. You're going to be aware of what's going to cost to renew that every year going forward. There are going to be no surprises. If you do that, you've won 80% of the battle because now you have your ecosystem in place. You have all the information there to where you're educated to, to advise them. And now um, – everything just falls into place. And you just call the guy and say, hey, it's January. We're filing my return. I've got my bookkeeper. He's going to send you the stuff. That's what I do. I want the quarterback. I want the people on the ground in each place I'm doing business. And I want to pay them enough to where I'm getting a standard of service that when I call, they help me. If you do that, I think that offshore paperwork won't be an issue. You just need people who understand the international picture. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. I wrote this book, which you can find on Amazon, to distill a lot of the stuff we talk about in these videos and a lot of the stuff I've learned over the last decade plus traveling all around the world, teaching you about how to legally reduce your taxes, build your personal freedom, and create wealth faster. Definitely get a copy of this book if you want to learn more. Now, if you want to watch more videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications bell so you never miss one of our new videos with more tips on how to go where you're treated best. And if you're already a six or seven figure entrepreneur and you'd like to put these strategies in place for yourself, go to nomadcapitalist.com and learn about how I can help you.